overnight tragedies and long-term miracles. Good things take time, but bad things can happen in an instant. Will Smith took years to build his career and reputation just to have them taken away at the 2022 Oscars. You can find countless other examples like this. The bad things come from insecurity and catastrophic error that occurs instantly. Making a human life is complex. A newborn baby already has 100 billion neurons, 250 synapses, 11 organ systems, and an entire personality. But notice that death is simple. Trauma, heart disease, infections, all fatal because of a lack of blood or oxygen to vital places. Two things to note is that the good things are often the ones that didn't happen. A death that didn't occur, a weapon not fired. The bad is always shoved up in your face. It's the death that happened and the weapon that was fired. Discounting the amount of progress that is achievable is indeed a very human thing to do. But we have to realize that the good things are often unnoticeable because they take so long to happen or they are the bad things that never occurred at all. Tiny and Magnificent Tiny things become extraordinary things. On the topic of compounding, a trend in history is that people assume the bigger the country or innovation, the bigger the threat or opportunity. But it's actually the smaller things that play a more important role. When the Saar bomb was built, it was 10 times the power of the nukes dropped during World War II onto Japan. The thing is, huge nuclear bombs were less likely to be used in a war because if you have the intention of wiping out your enemy, your enemy would also have the intention of wiping you out too. So this is a lose-lose situation. This led to the development of smaller nukes to lower the justifications of nuclear weapons. Little did they know that it backfired because the justifications of using small nukes would just lead to the justification of retaliating with a bigger one. This was actually Oppenheimer's idea because he was guilt-stricken about the first atomic bomb, who later admits that making smaller nukes was another mistake. The key takeaway here is that the collisions of small risks can lead to catastrophic events, but when done correctly, can lead to great things such as a huge return on investment. Elation and Despair The coexistence of optimism and pessimism leads to progress. Pessimism is more seductive than optimism mainly because it allows us to prepare for risks before they arrive. Optimism is just as important. Believing that things will eventually be better despite it looking murky is what allows us to stay in the game for the long run. Admiral Jim Stockdale fought in the Vietnam War who eventually became a POW. When released decades later and asked who had the hardest time in prison, he said it was the optimists. They died of a broken heart. The prisoners that often said they were going home by Christmas had the hardest time because as each Christmas passed, their hopes dwindled. The trick is that to stick around for the long term, you have to put up with the short terms. Plan like a pessimist and dream like an optimist. Casualties of perfection Being imperfect sometimes gives you advantages. A common practice that humans do is to squeeze out as much perfection and efficiency as possible in whatever we are doing because it feels right and it feels like we are maximizing our chances of success. The thing is, wasting time can actually be a great thing. If your job is to think through tough problems with creativity, then spending your time aimlessly in boredom can actually be the most valuable way you spend your time. As more thought jobs start to emerge in society, the less time people are actually given to think. It's hard to do it because your boss might fire you if you tell him that you're going to walk aimlessly around the park for 90 minutes. People think it's noble to be busy 24-7, but without structured time to think and be curious, you end up becoming less efficient during work hours. The more perfect you try to be, the more vulnerable you will be. It's supposed to be hard. Anything worth pursuing comes with a bit of pain. The trick is to not mind that it hurts. In 1846, 87 people led by the Donner family left Springfield, Illinois for California, where they were promised riches and a new beginning. The journey was brutal, with threats of attacks, disease, and the weather. After months of being on the trip, the exhausted party took the advice of an Ohio explorer named Lansford Hastings, who convinced them a shortcut to save three to four days by cutting through Utah instead of taking the traditional trail through southern Idaho. Well, Hastings was completely wrong, as this shortcut was longer and took the entire party through the heat of the Great Salt Lake Desert in the middle of summer. The entire party lost most of their oxen, nearly ran out of water, and pushed them back a whole month. Eventually, while passing by the Sierra Nevada mountains in the middle of the brutal 1847 winter, this resulted in many people dying, and the survivors ended up relying on cannibalism to survive. All of this because of a single shortcut. 
Shortcuts or hacks seem appealing because it sounds like paths to win prizes with the least effort. But a lot of things in life require the realization that there is a price for everything, and to succeed, that price sometimes must be something you are willing to pay. Keep running. The competitive advantages eventually fails. Competitive advantages that are gained will eventually fall apart because the success that is brought upon from this advantage plants the seeds of decline. When you gain the advantage, you become successful, which leads to hubris, and hubris marks the beginning of the end for most success. There is an irony that people work so hard to gain an upper hand in life just to not have to work so hard at some point in their lives. The relaxation that settles in removes all paranoia which allows competitors and a world that's constantly changing to creep up and surprise us. The Red Queen hypothesis is an idea coined by evolutionary biologist Lee Van Valen. He states that there are no permanent advantages brought upon by evolution. It's a constant arms race between predator and prey. As the Red Queen once said, now here you see, it takes all the running you can do to keep in the same place. The wonders of the future. It's easy to ignore the advancements of technology. Throughout history, we often view past innovations as being amazing, while future innovation is limited because we pick the easiest ones to do. But hey, look at Facebook. It used to be an app just for college students to show how drunk they got every Friday, but now it plays a major role in global politics. The light bulb wasn't made by Thomas Edison, he merely took someone's idea and perfected it. And look at how many light cities use in the modern day. It's hard to predict what innovation can bring to us, but it's easy to think that humanity is falling behind. But that's because it takes a few decades for advancements to truly be put into practical use. Harder than it looks, and not as fun as it seems. The grass isn't always greener on the other side. Most people don't disclose what torments them, their fears, or their insecurities, and their happiness, which is totally normal. It's easy to convince people that you aren't close to to see the ways that you are not. We should keep that in mind when comparing ourselves with others. Everything you come across is sales. Everyone is trying to craft an image of who they are, but not a reflection of their true selves. Skills are shown, but flaws are hidden. Everyone has their own problems that they don't tell, at least until you get to know them well enough. Take note of that and you become more forgiving, both towards yourself and others. Incentives, the most powerful force in the world. People can do crazy things and justify them when incentives are just as crazy. Everyone is susceptible to incentives, the most powerful force that moves the world. It gets people to defend just about anything that they do. Not only do incentives influence other people's decisions, but it makes us blind to how they impact our own. The strongest pull of incentives is the desire for people to hear what they want to hear and see what they want to see. In 1923, Henry Luce wanted to create a magazine called Facts, which would only report on things that were objectively true. But he then realized it was too difficult. And that, my friends, was how Time magazine was born, with the idea that saving readers' time would bring the most value as a publisher. Objective truths are hard to advertise because incentives push us in another direction. They keep us crazy and make unsustainable trends go longer than reasonable because of social or financial reasons. Now you get it, things you've experienced are the most persuasive. You can read and study to have more empathy, but you don't know what you want, what you are willing to do, or how far you can go if you haven't done something with your own hands. After the Great Depression hit Germany in the 1930s, hyperinflation followed and basically destroyed the economy. That was until a guy in a city mustache came to power with his new idea. And for most people who have not had a job for years, the people were all in for it. It's hard to understand how people would respond to risk or desperation until you are in the heat of the moment. You could train a soldier how to fire a gun or follow orders, but no one can be taught the brutality of war until you are lying hopelessly under a shower of missiles. We often think we know how we feel, until we experience it firsthand and go, ah, now I get it. Time horizons. Saying that you're in it for the long run is easier than staying in the long run. The long run is just a sh collection of short runs that you have to deal with. That is the unfortunate part of life. Depending on your time horizon, usually the longer the more calamities and disasters you have to deal with. Sometimes your own belief in the long run isn't enough. It's what your partners, 
your co-workers and friends think about too. You might be patient about your idea, but convincing others to stick with you through hard times is difficult because not everybody wants to be in the long run with you. But one thing to overlook is that the world changes. Sometimes our patience might just be stubbornness. Stubbornness to be wrong, but not wanting to change our mind. Sticking in for the long run is less about time horizons and more about flexibility. The odds of success fall in favor when we set our time horizons with a flexible end date or an indefinite horizon. We might have missed the sunset today, but the sun will rise again the next day. Trying too hard. You get no points for difficulty. Doing difficult things is an enduring quirk in human nature, to be alert by intellectual stimulation and discounting simple things that are effective to more complicated and ineffective things. Cancer is hard to fight but easy to prevent. Former director of the National Cancer Institute, Harold Warmers, once stated that researchers focus too much on curing cancer than to prevent it. Prevention is boring in comparison to the prestige of cancer research. But persuading someone to quit smoking isn't as intellectually stimulating as looking at cells and molecules. Complexity gives an impression that you have control of a situation, while simplicity makes it hard for people to distinguish from cluelessness. Wounds healed, scars last. Would others think of the world the same if they had your experiences? What experiences shape your belief that are different to others? People who've had different experiences than you will think differently than you do. Their goals, wishes, and values are all different. Most debates that occur are not actual disagreements, but they're just people with different experiences talking over each other. Psychologist Ivan Pavlov trained his dogs to draw by ringing a bell before they were fed and the dogs associated the sound of the bell with a meal. But after a flood that hit Pavlov's lab in 1924, the dogs forgot their behavior of drooling when the bell rang. Hardcore stress leaves a mark. Extreme danger leads to prolonged loss of neurological activity. Those who didn't experience what you experienced won't understand your point of view. Since experiences are always different, disagreements will always be constant. It's the same as it's ever been, the same it will always be, and the same as it ever was. Well, here comes to the end of the book, same as ever. I still recommend you picking this up as it goes into more depth with the topics that we covered. If you would like to know more, check out this video right here for the first half of the book. See you in the next video.